When you run SQL programmatically within your applications, there are certain things that must be done by this SQL database engine. And this pretty much applies across the board. It doesn't matter what the database is, whether it's SQLite, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter. When you write SQL within your applications, you generally, uh, the big task is generating the SQL string. So here's a typical SQL statement that might be executed in a program, in an application. And it's just a simple select. It selects, it has a projection of three columns from one table, and it has a where clause with uh, two, two uh, conditions that constrain the results and then it orders. So all you simply do is pass this statement along to the SQL database engine and it will execute it for you. However, before it does that, it has to, it has to go through an optimization phase where it produces a SQL execution plan. And that can be sometimes expensive, depending on how many indexes there are, how many tables are involved, etc. So the, the way that you generally execute SQL to maximize performance is you replace hard-coded values for things in the WHERE clause or things that you're updating with parameter markers of some sort. And this allows the SQL database engine to examine the statement, prepare a plan, and cache it. And so you can execute the same statement over and over with different values, and it can reuse the plan and not go through the, the costly process of preparing the plan. So I'm gonna show you how you do that programmatically. What I'm going to show you here applies to all the statements, select, insert, update, and delete. So what I'm going to do is, uh, there's two different approaches generally. The first is to replace all your parameter values with parameter markers. They're just simple exclamation or question marks. So when you actually prepare your SQL inside of your app, you will generate a statement like this. And then when you run it, you'll generally provide an array of values that get substituted for all the parameter markers. What this allows the SQL database engine to do is to examine this statement. It doesn't matter what these values are because you'll generate the same SQL uh, with different values and it can prepare a plan. Another equal approach is to use parameter markers, named parameters, I should say. And this is the, the same thing, except you'll generally pass along some sort of hash or dictionary where it can match up the name with a value. This is the same result. Um, it allows the SQL database engine to prepare a plan. And then when you run the SQL, you'll run this SQL string, but provide the runtime values that get bound into the parameter markers or the name parameters.